Hello everyone and welcome back to my small little channel. Today I'm going to show you how to install an aftermarket trailer hitch on the Model Y and also give you my first impressions and thoughts. Let's jump right in. This isn't a pool. Congratulations, it's your lucky day. You get to rip this bumper off your brand new car. I installed the Torque Lift Central Eco Hitch for the Tesla Model Y. Thanks Torque Lift Central. It really was a bummer being one of the first suckers to get a Model Y and not have a trailer hitch option. But thanks to Torklift Central, they have an aftermarket product that looks great and works great. In the box is a hitch, a bag of stuff, and also if you ordered it, a wiring harness. Here's your part list. Feel free to pause any of this at any time and zoom in. And next up, we got our first steps. So we're gonna have to take off this little plastic trim piece in the trunk. You're gonna have to pull up pretty forcefully until you hear some loud and cringeworthy snaps and pops with pieces potentially flying as well. For reference, that little metal piece that flew out, it's a little metal clip slides right back in. Step two, we're gonna have to take apart some little clips and start prepping the light for removal. I use the flathead screwdriver to pop these guys up, but there are probably softer tools to use as well. Same here, tried to pull it out with my fingers, but Flathead, again, probably softer tools, leave less mark. Note, these bumpers are left and right bumpers. They cannot be interchanged. Now we're gonna peel these side panels back just a bit and unbolt and unconnect the taillights. Peeling this back with your hands can be quite a pain. And then not only that, I couldn't really even find the bolts and the connectors. So here's a nice little marked up video for you. And so you don't have to hunt for these bolts and connectors. That's the top bolt on the wiring harness, and then the bottom bolt is right below down here. If you thought peeling this back with your hands was painful enough, now try unbolting these taillights. This part royally sucks. Now we're going to, quote, gently but firmly pull the taillight rearward. Nothing about this feels gentle. Pull is rearward as best as you can, but as you can tell, that's not easy. Lucky me, nothing broke. Yay! Next step, unbolt this guy. Wazam, done! But wait, we get to dig into this side panel too because there are two tail lights. Be very careful when you're taking that tail light nut out as it can get lost pretty easily. I know this from experience. Now we get to start working on the wheel well and the arrow plate underneath the rear bumper. In the wheel well, it's just two plastic clips that we gotta pop out. Oh, hey, it's me. Anyways, under the bumper is a mixture of clips and bolts. Enjoy. Commit this bolt to memory. It'll pop back up later. Warning, do as I say, not as I do. Get the proper tool for this and don't use a flathead. For reference, my flathead is protected by some cotton and electrical tape, but we're gonna start pulling back this trim piece. Lucky me, I broke my first part. Repeat this on the other side as well. Don't go all the way around the wheel. Just up to the bumper, and then there's a little bolt behind there, and now fast forward, zoom, 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 and we're gonna take the whole bumper off. Inside the bumper, there are some clips and hooks, so it might be helpful to take not a flathead and poke those clips down while you're taking the bumper off. Be warned. Next up, we unclip this guy. This is your radar bar. Surprise, my bumper didn't come off. Remember that one bolt? Well, guess what? It's a circular nut, and I think it's supposed to be welded in place, but I probably broke the weld. Yay! I use the vice grips to hold the nut in place to either loosen or tighten that nut, depending on if I was taking apart or putting back together the bumper. Now we start to unbolt the sensor bar, so start to take that guy out of place. After that, we're gonna take off the three bolts on the cross member. We're holding it to the frame, and then cue the rain. This is when the wheels came off for the video. Trying to rush to get it done. So now we've got those black bars off of the bumper. You drop it onto the trailer hitch itself, and then you start to bolt it back into place. There is a spacer and a bolt that's supposed to go onto the backside of this trailer hitch. 
That would be right here. Ignore the original black bar. That's where it would go with the new trailer hitch. Torque all those guys down to 38 foot-pounds according to the instructions. Drop two washers there, one here, and then two here, one there. I don't know why. Put it back in place, center it up, bolt it down to 38 foot-pounds, and you're good to go. Don't put anything else back on. Looks like a Mad Max vehicle. Just kidding. Start with the sensor bar. Don't forget to plug it back in. And now this bad boy. I would highly recommend this be a two person job. As you can tell, I'm in such a pleasant mood. So just follow the steps in reverse and you're good. So far the hitch has been a great tool. It helps me carry my bikes and things around. And it appears all the autopilot and quote, full self driving features work flawlessly. If you don't like red lines, this aftermarket fix probably isn't for you, but it changes lanes, no problem. I took the bikes apart for uh, aerodynamic reasons. Don't blame me if this doesn't work, but it works for me. I tried all sorts of different configurations with the trailer hitch, but I'm gonna dig into this further. I don't think it's as efficient as putting something on the roof, to be honest. Here are my few qualms with this trailer hitch. The whole location doesn't make it super easy to work with. It also doesn't allow for a huge stroke when you're trying to bolt things in there. If they could move the hold just a little bit, but it's tough. I mean, there's not a lot of space to work with in there. Talking to Tesla, they also stated that supposedly they cannot install the firmware for the trailer hitch to get rid of the red bars, and also that potentially it changes something with the rear drive unit when in tow mode, and they will not cover any sort of failure with the rear motor if it does fail and they see an aftermarket trailer hitch. I'm also not a fan of the Batarang pull handle. I didn't install it myself. I personally think something like that Batarang on my Tesla looks similar to something like this. I opted for the potentially scratch my car and cursed myself method. I use a big fat tire lever for bikes and there's a little notch at the very top you can see right there that I stick it in and I pull it down and I start to pry all the way around. So far I haven't had too many issues, only one clip is broken. The big thing is when you're reinstalling, those clips get bent downwards and you need to make sure they're bent upwards and back into the correct slot so it installs appropriately. I think there's some more creative ways to handle this cover and I might come up with one myself, so stay tuned. Should you install the trailer hitch yourself or should you have Tesla handle it? Well, if this makes you cringe, then I think you should probably smash this button and go ahead and have Tesla handle it for you. By the way, smash the like button while you're at it and let me know if there's any other content you guys are interested in. Hope you enjoyed everything today. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out some of the links below to some of the products that I should have used during this video and stay tuned for more content about the Model Y and other random things that I usually take apart.